Good morning. Dan asked me to put together a short training video on how to use the online lab software that the district purchased for us. So I'm sorry that uh, I'm not meeting with you guys in person. As you know, we all left school early on Monday and that's unfortunate, but I am here to help you learn this, to be there the first time you use it with your kids if you want, and please reach out to me if you want more help. So uh, if you log on to explorelearning.com, this is the subscription that we purchased. Uh, it works best in Firefox, so Firefox is where you want to be. Explorelearning.com, and this is what the homepage looks like. Uh, in the upper right hand corner, if you click log in, this little green login button, I already preloaded all of your accounts. Uh, your username is your first initial followed by your last name and then VTSD. So for example, Cara Brown is C Brown VTSD, all lowercase. Your passwords are just password, all lowercase. So once you're logged in, you will see that your name appears up here, and that's how you know you're logged in. You guys will probably have a bunch of tabs right here indicating your classes, so you can go ahead and click on those um, and view through your classes that I set up for you. Now if I set them up incorrectly, I was trying to import them directly from PowerSchool, and apparently PowerSchool is not compatible with this website, so I'll show you how to edit these class names if you wanted to. Um, or if you need help with that, I can certainly help you with that. Up here, we have a settings button next to log out. If you go ahead and click the settings button and scroll down, here's where you can edit your information, including your password. So if you wanted to change your password from the default, just go ahead and type in the default password again, which is just password, all lowercase. And then if you wanted to make your new password, you know, the same as your email or network password, you can right here and then you would just click save when you're done. Now I'm going to log in as one of the teachers to show you guys how to get your students enrolled. So I'm just going to log in as Kara. Okay, to show you what the screen looks like. Okay, notice I have um, two biology classes loaded in here for Kara and two environmental classes. So if I wanted to assign a lab to my biology CP period 2 class, I would click on that tab, okay, and over here where it says class code, this is the series of digits or numbers that you would need to give your kids in order for them to enroll in this class. Alternatively, you could load your kids in one at a time and assign them a username and password, but this is pretty time consuming. So your kids would take this code and when they went to explorelearning.com, they would click on enroll in a class, put in this class code, and automatically get pushed into your roster. Then that puts the responsibility on your students as well for maintaining their username and their password for their individual account. It also lets them put in an email address just in case they ever lose their username and password, which is what we want. Now, if I named any of your classes wrong or duplicated them by accident, if you just click on the tab for that class, you can rename the class by clicking here. You can delete it altogether. Or if you really wanted to, you could add another one if, say, I missed one by accident and just enter basic information about the class. Now when your students log into Explore Learning and they're enrolled in one of your classes, if you haven't assigned them any labs, they're not going to really see anything. It's just going to be a blank home page. You need to assign them labs. So the online labs on Explore Learning, they have this little key term for them they call gizmos. Just, that's just their little term for digital manipulatives. So let's go ahead and start browsing through the gizmos or online labs available on this website. So if you click up here where it says browse gizmos, you can browse the gizmos by a couple different ways. You can do by academic standard, by grade and topic, or you can even look up your textbook um, and skim through specific chapters and try to find one aligned to what you're currently working on. Alternatively, up here in the search box, you can just search for a keyword of a gizmo. So I'm gonna go ahead and search for, um, let's say, genetics, and see what comes up here. Right now, if I scroll down, it looks like there's nine results uh, for genetics lab simulations. 
So um, I'm going to click on this one that says inheritance. All right, and this is what you're going to see um, when you click on the gizmo. You have a couple different options here. You have the actual gizmo itself. So if you click on this little picture, it's going to launch the simulation. Over here, you have the student exploration sheet available in both PDF and Word. So that's the accompanying questions that go along with the online lab simulation. So if I click on the PDF version, just to take a look at it here, as you can see, there's questions um, that go along with the lab. It basically guides the students through the simulation, tells them what to push, what kinds of things to record. There's all sorts of follow-up questions. So um, these are great. I use these for years. I love them. Now, if you are reading through this and you're like, OK, I only really want the students to do half of this, or I really want to manipulate one of these questions, that's when you could launch it in the Word form. So it's the same exact thing. Um, but Word, obviously, will allow you to edit the questions, whereas the PDF you can't really edit. So if you open it up, you like it, just keep the PDF and print that off or, you know, post it on your My Big Campus. If you want to edit it, print the Word one and, or download the Word one and edit the questions and then print that off for your students. There's also a teacher guide uh, available in both PDF and Word. There's an accompanying vocabulary sheet if you wanted that and of course an answer key as well, which is really nice. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on the simulation and launch it. And once you've launched the gizmo, um, as you can see, this part of the screen becomes interactive. Um, of course, you need to um, read through the manual or the guide that goes with it to see how to manipulate it, what ways to manipulate it. Um, so it looks like this one, I can create an alien uh, with a couple different features. And then I can breed them. And in this case, it's to look for, you know, which traits are passed down and which ones are not, which is a genetics thing. Underneath the actual lab simulation here that the students would work through and complete their worksheet, underneath there's a five question quiz and as long as the students are logged in, when they take their quiz, when they're done, it automatically sends those results to you. So there's only five questions, so it's either a 0, 20, 40, 60, 80, or 100. But when you log into your class again, and you click on this gizmo, it'll give you the results for that class. So after trying out one of these online simulations and looking through the student exploration sheet, let's say you like it and you want to assign it to your class, you can click here where it says add gizmo to class. And as you can see, it's really easy. You can just click this add button next to the class. So I'll click here, a little check mark comes up, or you can click add to all to assign to all your classes and then click done. Now, going back to your home page, very easy. You can either click here where it says Explore Learning, or over here where it says My Home Page. Okay, and you can click back to, let's say, I think we assigned it to period four. Nope. We assigned it to period six. So as you can see, if you click on period six, you have a couple options here to manage your roster, and that's where you can see which students have enrolled, but there's that there's that gizmo that we just assigned to the class. And as you can see, it says assessment results, zero. That's where when the students start taking that five question quiz, that's where you could get those assessment results. So I'm gonna click on that. It's gonna be blank, however, because we don't have any students enrolled, but it'll give the grades right there. So you can use this as a quiz grade and just give them that for a quiz. You can collect the worksheet and count it as a lab. You can count the worksheet as a classwork. Um, you can count the worksheet as, you know, whatever you want. Um, the questions are great. And depending on the gizmo, a lot of the gizmos are going to produce uh, different results. So the students won't be able to copy. I'm going to show you just one other one because some of them have a little bit more advanced features. So, for example, I loved this one, this photosynthesis one. It's one of my favorites. Some of the gizmos actually instruct the students to create graphs as they go. The software maps it for them, but they have to create graphs. So let's say we want to map light intensity. Okay. 
um, from 0% to 100%. And again, this, the exploration sheet walks the students how to do this. So they have a graph tab over here, and they can hit record data. And see, it puts a data point there for them. So then they can pull this up to 10% or 12%, hit record again. And as you can see, it's mapping the data for them. Okay, so it's creating a graph. Now, there's a little screenshot feature here, this little camera button. Again, all in the exploration sheet. If I click that, it takes a screenshot of this graph. Now, you can even have the students open up a Word document. And paste their graphs in here. Okay, so this could be handed in with the worksheet if you wanted.